Hi, I'm Trent Ellis, Underwater Director of Photography. Today I'm building and prepping the Aerie Alexa 35 camera, the Gates Alexa 35 housing, and the Aerie 18 millimeter Signature Prime lens. The first thing I'm gonna do before I strip down the camera and remove the LCD is go through and make sure all my project and camera settings are where I want them to be. Using the Aerie viewfinder, open the camera menu. Go through and configure all camera settings according to your project and preferences. For camera control through the housing, you'll be using assignable buttons. In the menu, go to User Buttons, GPIO User Buttons, and then configure buttons 1 through 12, which correspond to the buttons on the left side of the housing. This is where you'll access image variables like exposure and white balance, as well as monitor tools. Now that you're done configuring camera settings, you'll need to strip the Alexa 35 to the bare camera body. Remove any antenna, mounting brackets, base plates, or any other accessories. With the camera body prepped, remove the camera dovetail mount from the housing. On the housing body, release the three latches by depressing the lock and pulling up on the latches. Once released, the rear shell will remove freely. Slide the rear shell back until it's free from the housing. Rotate the lever lock until the camera mount is loose, then slide to the rear and free of the housing. Install the five provided screws to secure the mount to the top of the camera. Next, you're going to install the monitor into the monitor housing. In this case, I'm using the Small HD Ultra 5 monitor. Loosen the four screws. Connect the power and SDI cables to the monitor. Make sure the monitor is clean before closing the housing. Now check the ceiling surface and O-ring. Make sure both are clean. Close the housing and tighten the screws in a star pattern. Before installing the camera or mounting the monitor housing to the housing body, remove the dome port. Remove the port by rotating 90 degrees and pulling away from the housing. Next, mount the monitor housing by aligning the dovetail on the top of the housing body. Then tighten the two thumb screws. Disconnect the D-tap. Now route the cables into the housing as shown here. Tighten the brass collar until snug. Reconnect the monitor power to the DTAP cable. Now grab the GPIO box. If these shorter screws that you see here aren't already installed, they're provided with the housing. Slide the GPIO box into the housing cradle with the Aerie logo facing up. Next, grab the GPIO and record four way cable harness for the last step before putting the camera in the housing. Mate the LBUS connector with the LBUS port on the front of the camera next to the lens mount. Mate the run-stop connector with the RS port on the back of the camera. For smooth installation, organize and move out of the way cables on the housing and camera body.
Now slide the camera into the housing. I find reaching through the port base makes this process easier. The camera should slide into the housing without resistance. Ensure that there are no cables in the way. Lock the camera into position with the locking lever. Now you can connect all of the loose cables. The BNC type record trigger. The GPIO box connection. The D-tap under the rear of the camera. And the SDI cable from the monitor to the camera's SDI-1 output. Before closing the rear of the housing, install a brick battery. Install the rear shell of the housing. Be careful and manage cables as you slowly slide the rear shell forward and closed. Close the locking latches, starting with the sides and then the top. Now we'll move on to installing the lens. Before you install the lens, you'll need to remove the port base. Loosen and remove the four screws holding the port base on. With the port base removed, you can mount the lens. Select a guide bar and drive shaft long enough to reach the gear you're targeting. Screw in and hand tighten the 19 mm guide bar. Insert the drive shaft into the coupler. One end of the shaft will have a small flat spot. Align this with the set screw. Tighten gently and don't over tighten. Before mounting the lens gear drives, loosen these four screws so that the gear drive moves freely. Align the lens gear drive with the guide bar and drive shaft. Slide the lens gear drive down until it lines up with the gear on the lens. Center the drive shaft and gear hub to the bracket. Tighten the screw and secure the lens gear drive to the guide bar. With the drive shaft and hub centered, pivot the large gear to make intimate contact with the lens gear. Gently tighten two pivot screws. Firmly tighten the screw that couples the drive gear hub to the drive shaft. Test the function of this gear and then repeat this process on the other side of the lens. Because this is a prime lens, I'll only be using two gears, but three are available to use for a zoom. Test and make sure that both gear drives are working. Once you've confirmed the lens and gear drives are working fine, it's time to reinstall the port base. To reinstall the port base, position the port base over the entire lens and lens gear drives and secure the front shell with the four screws and washers. Tighten the four screws firmly in a star pattern.
Because this is a longer lens, I'll be using two sets of port rings. Before installing each port ring, remove the O-ring and check it for any defects. Then add silicon lubricant by pulling the O-ring through your fingers with a small dollop of grease. A well lubricated O-ring allows easier rotation during installation and removal of ports and port rings. With the O-ring reinstalled, install the port ring. Place the port ring lock into the locked position. Then carefully mate the port ring to the front shell. Rotate 90 degrees clockwise to its normal position where it will lock. Repeat this process with the rest of the port rings. They'll alternate with the lock up and down on every other port ring, always rotating clockwise. You may notice me sizing up the port rings. I'm attempting to extend the port rings to match the length of the lens. With the last port ring installed, you'll notice it comes in line with the end of the lens. This is the gate's recommendation for port placement. Next, get the port ready to install. I'm going to start by cleaning both the inside and outside of the port, and then lubricating the O-ring. Once the O-ring is reinstalled, the port will mate with the port ring and then rotate 90 degrees clockwise into its normal position. Now we'll use the Seal Check 2 system to make sure there are no leaks in the housing. Connect the hose to the back of the housing. Turn on the gauge, twist the knob to the pump setting, and turn on the pump. Try to target 100 millibar, as that's an ideal pressure to test the seals. Once the vacuum gauge passes 100 millibar, you can turn off the vacuum. I didn't do it in this video, but you should turn the knob valve to the 3 o'clock test position. Once the vacuum gauge settles, make sure the number is no longer dropping. Turn off the gauge and remove the hose. Be sure to reinstall the plug on the back of the housing, as failing to do so may result in a flood. Repeat this process for the monitor housing. I pull a vacuum any time I close the housing, and then I go back and test it right before I get in the water before I dive. Now power on the camera with the knob on the left side of the housing. Make sure the SDI monitor is working. Go through and test all 12 functions you set up earlier in the prep. Also, make sure you test the record trigger. The small HD Ultra 5 monitor housing comes with a buoyancy block to help trim out the housing.
This housing also comes with a variety of housing weights, including 4 ounce, 8 ounce, and 16 ounce weights that can be placed on dovetails as well as weight bosses placed throughout the exterior of the housing. Now that the housing is built, all that's left to do is get it in the water and finish trimming it out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.